Hey guys, hope you're well. Usually I, ha I hold this, but like, sometimes I'm like not being careful. But yeah, I'll just leave it right here. And also it gives me room to like talk and like, I can express my, I can express myself with my hands. Literally, exactly a year ago, I filmed a video about Quebec and the French language and the entertainment industry in Quebec. And I tried to edit it last night, but it was just all over the place and I felt like, I, I felt like I was also always going on attention and sometimes go really into the politics where I think I really I just want to go straight to the point like this is the situation and how is it like applicable in the entertainment industry so I'm just going to go over some of the points a little bit of background I grew up in Montreal in the province of Quebec and I want to say like over the years although like people still think Montreal as the French city of Canada I do want to say like Montreal is very much so a like bilingual city like there's a lot of anglophones most people that I know in Montreal are perfectly bilingual like they would be able to do both a conversation in French and in English there was like a lot of discussion when I was filming about like the government potentially limiting the spaces in English in English speaking universities and colleges and like the immigration process for like people who wanted to like move to Canada well move specifically to Quebec and the main requirement is like that those people would be able to like, to, like speak French it really did like like looking back what I was trying to say in my earlier video was like I feel like Quebec is in this position where like they're th they're threatened by the presence of French in Quebec but also like more generally in Canada and when I speak to other Canadians outside of Quebec they really do see like that their French is really really limited and I understand why like Quebec is in this position of like really preserving their French language but the thing is New, New Brunswick is the only province in, in Canada that is officially bilingual whereas Quebec is like we only know that French is the, like is the, the main language in the province the issue that I had with like the like government's plan of like limiting the the place of english in quebec it really felt like they're really seeing english as the enemy of french where you're just gonna accept the fact that english is a universal and universal language like if you go to italy but your italian is really limited you're gonna speak to you're, you're gonna turn to english you're not gonna turn to french you're, gonna, you're not gonna turn to mandarin chinese like it's english is usually the route to go i also feel like quebec is also in this rivalry i want to say with france because Obviously, when you speak, when you think of French, the French language, you think of France, duh, obviously. But there's Belgium, there's the French part of Switzerland, there's also Quebec, and I think that like they're trying to appeal to the French, but at the same time, okay, because there are a lot of French people that move to Montreal because like of the opportunities for university and all that stuff. But growing up, I always because I also went to a French school, like we followed the system from France and not the French Canadian system. Little side note. But when I say French Canadian, I want to say Quebec. like I'm I'm thinking of Quebec because technically the, t the term French Canadian is like very broad. Although the majority of French Canadians are in Quebec, there are like communities in the western part of Canada that are French speaking, and there's also like another big French region in New New Brunswick that called Acadie, and they have their old history. And I think you should like you should really look into it because there's. In that specific region, they have shack, which is like French but also English. And when you, you when you hear it, you feel like it's for English, but it's not. It's like their own language, which is really really cool. Anyways, going back, but what I was going to say um, is that just like being in like living in Montreal, but like also the fact that there was also a very like French influence of how I grew up. There there are a lot of, like there's always like this um, element of like French people looking down on Quebecois people because they don't adopt the same vocabulary and I don't find that with like American English versus British English like I, I never seen an English person look down on an American like oh this is how you say this like there's a little banter between like oh you say fall we say autumn but it's not like oh like I'm never gonna take an American seriously because of the way they speak like there's this hostility within like the French communities like really sad because like if you look at the history of Quebec and like the French, how it developed, it. like it's really interesting, and like sometimes you see French people say, "Oh, Quebecois are like so like they're, they're speaking their own language." Like I would never understand, but Quebecois also make the effort to understand French people. So like, why are you not repercussive? 
Repousik. <laughs> like, I'll put the word. But like, why are you not like putting the same effort back? Not only that, so like, not only Quebec feels threatened by the rest of Canada, the English language as like a whole, but also like there's like the sense of rivalry between Quebec and France. But I also want to say like within Quebec, Montreal is so different from the rest of Quebec. In my opinion, I really do see Montreal more so as a Canadian city rather as a Quebecois city. Yes, Montreal is in Quebec, but like if you go to Montreal and then you go to another, like you go to Quebec City or you go to Rimouski or you go to Trois Rivières, like it's very, very different. I remember like the Prime Minister of Quebec was saying like, oh, people from Montreal feel like they're like so above the rest of, of the rest of Quebec, and I'm like, but. Like that's where all the opportunities are and like they, they are in Montreal. Like all the big tech companies, all like the big movie productions, they happen in Montreal. Like they shot X-Men in Montreal. They didn't shot it in like Fimuski, like no offense, but like that's where everything is happening. So I understand why Montreal would be essentially like this type of like bilingual city. So I feel like Quebec also has like some eternal issue. So how can I like make it about the entertainment industry is that Growing up, I really felt like the media didn't represent accurately Montreal's culture or like, like the overall culture of Quebec. When you see it now, you see the difference of the, the kids' shows now in Quebec where there's like this emphasis of like, okay, like we're gonna put more diversity and all that stuff. But until a couple of years ago, there wasn't that shift made into adult media. It, it, like in Quebec, like it was still the same shows. When you think of, I don't know, like I, I can't even explain it to you. Like it's just like it's always the same artists, like the same comedians from the past like 30 years that are still like very like much like in your face. And I understand that the like talent scope is very like small compared to Hollywood. But even in Quebec, you always see the same 10 artists. And I'm like, are they tired? Like, don't they want to retire? But I feel like slowly but surely, they're not only putting black and Arab actors not only like as secondary roles, but like also like more. So as prominent roles in the series i think the one show that i remember watching that was like oh my god that's like a really good show is tom v so essentially it's a it's a show about this teacher in secondary school and she, they have 20 it's a, every season it's like a new a new professor with their new class but it's like the one professor with 29 students so and that's why it's called tom v it's like really live so and essentially it would tackle like intimidation and like racism and family problems uh, financial problems but within within the students the personal life but also the the personal life of the professor and i think it was really really interesting and every year they had like new teachers and like new stories and it was really diverse like the cast was diverse I, and with the streaming platform especially in the us they have like the like every net network has their own streaming platforms i remember watching this news report and they were showing in quebec they don't really watch like our shows they all they always turn to disney plus and netflix but it's like yeah but because they offer a wider range of content you know like if you like romance like it's not the same romance from the past 30 years from Quebec, like there's there are new stories being told. Although like Hollywood nowadays is always becoming repetitive. Content available and you're able to also to watch shows from Spain, shows from South Korea, shows from South Africa. Like there's just so much stuff out there. Hey, I'm currently editing the video and what I'm trying to say is that although the streaming platform in Quebec would work for their own users, like local users, I think you can also benefit from the fact that if a show or a movie is successful in Quebec, why would not put that show on a bigger platform like Netflix? I think both can coexist. Like you, you don't have to see Netflix and Disney Plus as your enemy. If you know that you can only do so much with that platform and you th with that show, and you think that it can it can really provide a wider range, put your content on the on a better platform. You know. And I was so 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 happy that. Lately, they have put more shows on Netflix that are from Quebec. You never know, someone could talk about the show and it could go viral. Like, there's Lupin, who is a French show that has gained a lot of success internationally. You have Elite, that was a Spanish, that Spanish show that had gained momentum internationally. Squid Game from South Korea. So, like, you, you see that it's not only American shows that are really popular on Netflix. If you, like, you just, like, I, I just like to see that there's this willingness from Quebec to, like, put their content out there in hopes that it can gain more international like success and that's how i think quebec can really make sure that like they're promoting their culture and the language okay so there's bunker backup i think that's like a very popular quebecois movie um it's um like a good cup backup like a, a quebecois version of it 
um, there's runaway, there's um, can you hear me? Like these these are the words in English. The perfect, the get to the perfect family. So yeah, like you have, and you have also have a lot of like um, comedians, francophones comedians. There's Martin Matt, there's Rachid Badouri, there's Mathieu Duval. I th I'm surprised that they don't have Sugar Sammy. That's so weird. Sugar Sammy is like one of the biggest French Canadian comedians, and he's able to double into like he's doing bilingual shows so you have both the the english and the french within so you can see how like within quebec especially within montreal we incorporate both french and english in our language you can always go on look on google and find like sugar sammy sketches it, it's like really funny and then on instagram the other day i found there's this new show based on a haitian family in in montreal and the thing is montreal is has a strong Haitian community. They have a strong Arab community. Even the Montreal slang has Haitian and Arab words that are used within like the Montreal slang. From what I'm seeing online, like the, the discourse, people were a bit like shocked and they were a bit like hesitant. Like why would we have like a Haitian family show? But like for the past 30, 30 plus years, there, there were only like white family shown on like the Quebecois TV shows. The name of the show is La Cainou, which Essentially in Creole, it means like our house. Right now, it says it's only available on Two Point TV, which is like the like Quebecois like streaming platform. Which I think it's like such a missed opportunity. Like they should put it like I think they should put it like on Netflix. To me, this is bigger than just the Haitian community in Montreal. I'm saying Netflix because that's like the main streaming platform, but it could be on any other huge platform like Disney Plus or Amazon Prime. I think I just think that a lot of Haitians outside of Montreal, so. I'm thinking of New York or Miami, Jacksonville, like other Haitian communities outside of Montreal and Quebec that like, could really benefit from having a show about us, you know? Although not all Haitians under like fully understand French. I really think that this is bigger than just a little family in Montreal. Like it, it has it I, I just sense that this has a bigger impact. And I understand that small shows like this don't want to take too big of a risk, but I think this show is worth taking the risk. A really good point that I forgot to mention is that there's no denying the fact that Quebecois are so proud of the language, of their culture, but the thing is I feel like they're arguing with, with each other rather than focusing on our media represent well our culture to the point that we can actually make make it known outside of the province. I think a lot of people would be more interested in the culture, in the language. There's no denying that there's talent in Quebec. Like there's, there's just so much stuff that needs to be done. It, it's really interesting to see how the, the Quebecois media is like evolving social media and like the, the this need of new storylines of new actors the fact of like taking risks but also when you're so comfortable with your identity your language why would you see like english as your main threat yeah at this point we recognize that english is like a universal a universal language how can we portray online on our platforms that quebec is, has a nice culture and how can we make sure that people are interested not not like putting down another language to make yourself feel better and also like with like everything that's happening in Haiti and I think like that this show I think it could be a really good thing for, for people to see like another light of the Haitian culture and the like the Haitian diaspora. Yeah, I'm I would be interested in seeing that show actually. Like that's all I have. I know it's like a little bit rambling, but by the looks of it I think I can edit this video a bit better. So yeah, I hope that you like the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!